Channel 4 News understands the Serious Fraud Office is now involved in the investigation of News International. It adds a complex new layer of legality for MPs to negotiate this week in their questioning of witnesses. Rebecca Brooks' appearance is looking in doubt after her arrest. Her spokesman says that came as quite a surprise, as Faisal Islam reports. Tonight, Rebecca Brooks, so long the Queen of British tabloids, is being questioned by police. Arrested at a midday appointment at a London police station, Ms Brooks resigned as Chief Executive of News International on Friday, and it's a remarkable fall from grace. Just a fortnight ago, few could have expected not only Sunday without the news of the world, but that its most famous former editor would be facing police questioning about allegations of corruption and phone hacking. I'm delighted that Rebecca Brooks has been arrested. I thought she should have been arrested back in 2003 when she said that she had paid police officers for information because that is bribery and corruption, pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm glad that the police investigation is clearly now underway, which should have been underway years ago. But I, I just have this sneaking suspicion about the timing that it's remarkably convenient coming just two days before the Select Committee hearings. As bad as that arrest might be for Ms Brooks' former bosses, there could be an entirely new front about to open up against the Murdochs. This programme has learned that the serious fraud office is making preliminary inquiries into the goings-on at News International. Investigators here are looking at dozens of cases involving News International, and whilst it can't be certain that they'll proceed to a full formal investigation, they've taken the first step and News International is a key area of interest inside the SFO. Separately, former minister Tom Watson has written to the director of the SFO, urging him to mount a full investigation into alleged breaches of company law around the phone hacking scandal. Well, on the face of it, the fiduciary interests of the shareholders have been breached by the directors. I'm pretty certain that after the statement last week, the Serious Fraud Office will be looking at this, but just to make sure I've written them to them and asked them to make sure that there hasn't been a gross mismanagement of shareholder money. Mr Watson's letter raised questions about how payments made by News International were accounted for in the company books, including the then secret payments made to hacking victims signed off by James Murdoch. The SFO would not confirm or deny any investigation, as is normal practice, and a senior News International source said the company had received no contact from the SFO, but some of the questions are likely to arise in Parliament on Tuesday. First, there was the Met Police investigation into phone hacking, then it was an investigation into the payment of police officers for information, but now, potentially most concerning to News Corp's shareholders, investigation appears to have moved to the company's finances. Although the allegations about phone hacking and payments to police might command the headlines as Rebecca Brooks is arrested, the unravelling of the money trail might potentially be the most toxic to the Murdochs and their grip on News Corporation. It's yet another front for them on an already bad day. The apologies continued from News Corporation today and the sorries are expected to continue on Tuesday as Rupert and James Murdoch face the Culture Select Committee. MPs are taking legal advice about whether Miss Brooks herself can appear at that grilling.